As you know, AI has dramatically changed the photographer's workflow, especially just in this last year. Today, we're gonna to be focusing specifically on a plugin by Retouch For Me. I wanna show you our workflow, how we like to use these tools in studio to save a tremendous amount of time, and how I think it can save you a lot of time as well if you happen to do quite a bit of retouch work. So Retouch For Me is an Estonian company that specializes in creating AI-powered retouching tools, and they can be used as standalone apps or also as plugins for Photoshop, which is mostly how we're gonna be using it today, just because that's kind of how it fits in our workflow. I'll also demonstrate though the standalone side. Now, just full disclosure, I wanna be completely transparent and say that they have sponsored this video, but at the same time, we've actually been using their tools in our studio for well over a year. So I don't wanna pretend that this is an unbiased review because that would be disrespectful towards you. I wanna say that I dig their tools and what I wanna do here is show you what I love, show you things that, well, I think could be improved on and also just help you to understand whether these tools might save you a bit of time. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so we are here inside of Lightroom Classic and I wanna show you Retouch for me for the most part, kind of from the standpoint of our workflow and how I like to use it. So once inside of Lightroom, these are the images that we're gonna be working through in this video, but load up any image you like. I'm gonna go ahead and just apply a basic look to it and I might make a tiny adjustment and just lift the blacks a little bit. And when I'm done, I'll press Control E or Command E to bring this into Photoshop. While Photoshop is loading, one quick note that I wanna make is that each of these plugins is around a hundred bucks, maybe a bit more. So they're not necessarily cheap. Now the good news is that it's not a subscription. So you pay for it once, you get updates, you can use it as much as you want. That part is great. But at the same time, they're not necessarily cheap either, right? So the suggestion that I would make to you is just make sure that the plugin you're getting has a specific purpose in your workflow, that it's actually addressing a pain point and not just something that you think would be kind of nice to have in case you need it. All right, so we are into Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and press Control J or Command J just to get this onto a new layer. And I'm gonna show you one of my favorite plugins just to kind of start from the top. So we're gonna to go to the filter menu, go to retouch for me. I have all the plugins that are installed. So what I'm gonna do is select portrait volumes. This is one of those that I kind of feel like can just be applied to every single image that I create and it's gonna make improvements across the board. But it gives me a chance to kind of show you the dialogue. So once you pull it up inside of Photoshop, this is what you see. And it just did a bit of basic processing there, but essentially what you saw was this little menu to the bottom left that says scale detection. It's gonna do that automatically, but if you wanna specify like this is a close-up portrait, I can select that and it's gonna automatically process the image based on it being like a close-up portrait. Or you can just leave it on auto, it'll auto detect. At the top though, the other option here that I think is important is your blend option. So this is where you can turn the setting down or you can turn it up to get more of the effect. Now I'm gonna leave it up just a bit because it's kind of a subtle effect on this image and I want you guys to be able to see it. I want it to translate through the video. I usually leave this one around 100%, 120% though, and I think it's great. You can also apply it to a soft light layer. So if you want your adjustments to go onto a specific soft light layer, you can do that. But since I created a new layer in Photoshop, we're just gonna go ahead and press apply. With that, it applies the setting. Now, what did it do exactly? Well, portrait volumes kind of create depth in your images. This is kind of what I love about it is that you can kind of apply this to every single image you create or every portrait that I create. And it just adds a little bit of, of depth that makes it just a little bit enhanced. So this is cool. I'm gonna go ahead and save this out because we're just barely scratching the surface. I wanna show you kind of the power of these tools because what I'll actually do is start stacking these together and then you can run them as basically a Photoshop preset or an action across an entire batch of photos to edit a huge group of images. So let's do this. Let's go back to Lightroom. We're gonna select another image. This time, we're gonna start with this one. And again, from kind of a typical workflow standpoint, I would start with the overall look. Um, for this one, I feel like it's a little bit on the pink side, so I'm gonna go back to green, and I'm gonna bring the exposure up a bit, and that's a, a good starting. Let's press Control E or Command E to get this into Photoshop. Now for this image, I wanna show off the AI Dodge and Burn as well as the Deal option, because again, these are kind of staples in my workflow, and I like to kind of stack and layer these. So I will zoom out just a bit by pressing Control minus, Let's go ahead and press Control J or Command J just to bring this to a new layer as well. And I'm gonna go to Filter, we're gonna go to Retouch For Me, and I'm gonna start with the Heal option. So we're gonna go Retouch For Me Heal. Okay, the Heal is done, it did auto detection. We can go ahead and go up to Sensitivity now and we can turn this up or down as you see fit. I'm just gonna leave it fully up. I'm gonna go ahead and press Apply to apply to the image. Now what I love about this is it looks like a huge improvement, but at the same time, it was pretty subtle. 
So it sort of detected every single thing that it knew was a blemish, that it knew was maybe, you know, acne or, or a pimple, whatever it was. And it left everything else that could potentially just be, you know, like freckles and other stuff. So this is a huge improvement. You can kind of just, again, use this liberally. What I'm gonna do now is press Alt Control uh, Shift E or Option Command Shift E just to get everything to a new layer because now I'm gonna layer this with the Dodge and Burn plugin. So this time we're gonna go here. And so we're basically using one adjustment and then layering the next ones upon them, right? I'm gonna leave this on automatic scale detection. Now this is amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the blend up. We're gonna bring it down. And what I love about this is again, it made a huge improvement over skin while still being subtle, while still retaining freckles and other features of the skin. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to say 150 and hit apply. Oh my goodness. Now look at this. I'm gonna to toggle the original background layer. So just by pressing Alt or Option, that's the original. These are the improvements. Now you will notice that in some cases it is actually affecting the background, right? In this particular image, the reason why that that's happening is because the background is kind of the same color tone as the skin. So it might be misinterpreting it as skin, but those are really easy things to kind of mask off if you notice that it's actually noticeable. Here, it's like, I, I honestly don't even care. Like it's totally fine. I love this. It looks fantastic. We're gonna save it out and go back to layer. Again, just putting those two images side by side, such a huge improvement there. Now this go around, I wanna show you one of the more specialized tools, the background or backdrop cleanup tool. If you shoot in the studio quite a bit, especially if you're using white or infinity walls or whatever it might be, you're gonna get constant scuffs and marks on the ground that just are annoying and obnoxious because it takes a good amount of time to clean up. And you can use like Gaussian blur type stuff, but honestly, it doesn't look quite as good as what I'm about to show you. So first, let's just go ahead and get this image to a place that we like. I'm gonna apply a look and I might even leave this one a little bit on the darker side, sort of leaving it as a uh, more muted image with a little bit more of the highlight kind of popping out. And I like that. Let's go ahead and press Control E or Command E to get this into Photoshop. And again, part of this is I wanna demonstrate some of the, you know, the entire workflow aspects of why I like to keep this in the plugin format and in Photoshop as opposed to just kind of using it always standalone. I do like the standalone aspect, especially when it comes to batch processing, which I'm gonna show you here too. But for an image like this, I love being in Photoshop first because I can quickly just kind of select this area. And especially right now with like generative fill and whatnot, I'm not even gonna use that. I'm just gonna use content aware fill, press okay. And Photoshop does a beautiful job of just kind of automatically fixing this stuff in my background. So that already looks pretty fantastic. And if I wanted to, I could fix up the highlights and do the same thing there, but that's not the, what this is about. So let's get straight into the tool now. What I'm gonna do is press Control J or Command J to get on a new layer. And now we're gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to retouch for me, and this time we're gonna go to clean backdrop. Now again, it's gonna do its magic here. And what it's asking to the right is like, are we looking for coarse dirt? Are we looking for medium dirt or for fine dirt? And I'm gonna probably just put it somewhere in between. I'm gonna leave it on medium dirt. Now this might take a minute, depending on the speed of your computer, as well as the resolution of the file that you're working with. So give it a moment. Okay, this just finished up and it looks absolutely incredible. So look at the before versus the after. It's wild how much of this is just fixed and done. Now, this is a great time to kind of tell you that one of the things that I like to do is when it comes to, I guess, jobs where I need each image to be perfect, I do like to be working with these plugins inside of Photoshop so that way I can kind of catch anything that the AI might miss, right? So this is a, a perfect example, like say the blue tape on the floor, I might just go ahead and create a new layer, grab my patch tool and, and say fix this kind of stuff real quick inside of Photoshop. So that's why I like to be working on these images just directly inside uh, of Photoshop when I'm, I'm doing like say commercial or editorial projects. But let's save this out and let's go back to Lightroom because that's not always the case, right? This group of images right here, let's say that it kind of represents a, um, I don't know, it could be anything. It could be maybe school portraits. It could be large volume catalog portraits. Anytime where like you need to get a large group of images done, um, to a good degree, but they don't necessarily need to be perfect. This is a great time to just batch process all of them. So oftentimes that would be like proofing examples. Like I want my client to proof and to choose the images that they want, but I don't want all this junk to be in those photos. So what I did was I exported this to the desktop and I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to bring up the retouch for me standalone plugin of clean backdrop from here. I can just take any of those images that I have exported and I can batch process them. So I'm gonna go ahead and select image, 
I'm gonna choose the desktop, this is where I save them all out to background retouch. And let's do, actually I saved it to a separate one, so there we go, retouch for me batch. Now let's go ahead and select these, press OK. And now it's gonna bring them in, it's gonna detect them automatically. I just hit start processing. It's gonna work through each one of those images and it'll ask me where I want it to be saved. So just so that it doesn't overwrite the originals, you know, I might put it in a separate folder. So I might say, well, why don't we put it in this folder? So I'll say these are the retouched images here. So we'll go select folder. Now it's gonna automatically go through that entire sequence of images and just do it on its own. So this is one of the best ways to use AI to clean up a large volume of images. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. You guys understand the point. Okay, last one, let's put this all together. I wanna show you how to create an action now using these AI plugins because, well, this is really cool. So we're gonna start with this image and I'm just gonna apply a basic look again. We're gonna get it to something that we like. I might lift the blacks a bit so it's not too contrasty and right about there is good. I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust. So I'm getting to a place that I kind of like and then we're gonna go ahead and press Control E or Command E to bring this into Photoshop. Now from here, let's create a new folder. I'm gonna call this Retouch For Me Actions. Next, we're gonna go ahead and press plus and I'm gonna say, let's call this the Portrait Special Sauce. So what I'm aiming to do right now is create an action that's basically going to be something that I could apply to every single portrait that I create, right? So it needs to be kind of subtle enough, but also do something. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the filter menu and I'm gonna start from here. So let's start with the heal option. And as you're creating this overall look, this action, the beauty about this is that not only can you apply this, well, special sauce, whatever your kind of setup might be, you can apply it to any image you like, you can also use it to batch process. So we can use actions as droplets and you can actually set Lightroom Classic to export and to use those actions to be applied to every single image that you export. So I'm gonna leave this at 100%, I dig. Let's go ahead and apply that. And now we're gonna go to the next one. Okay, we've got that one, so retouch for me. So the order of this is gonna matter quite a bit in how you do it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select Dodge and Burn next. You also wanna leave uh, most all the options on automated because if you wanna create an action you can apply to everything, you want the AI to be able to detect what it is that you're applying it to. So I'm just leaving everything on auto. For this one, I wanna see if we wanna maybe take the blend up a bit. Kinda like it, like around 120, that's nice. We're gonna hit apply. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a couple more too. So while we're at it, why don't we also hit the eyes? So let's go for eye brilliance. Same thing, leave this on auto. Okay, make sure that we like it. So I'm gonna zoom in on this one. Just make sure it didn't go too far with the eyes. And let's see, that's zero. Yeah, we don't want it to be like alien eyes. I want it to be like somewhere around maybe like 80%. So they're not too poppy. That's good. I love that. Let's do another one. Skin tone is gonna actually kind of unify skin tone. So you're not getting red blotchy spots or whatnot. Again, it's a very subtle effect that I find that I can apply to kind of every image. Last one, let's go ahead and go to portrait volumes. Fantastic. I'm gonna leave that one at 100% and call it a day. So once you're done with it, go ahead and press stop. Now, of course, when you're layering all these AI tools, it's gonna to take a bit of time, especially if you're processing this over a batch set of images, and let's say that they're high resolution images, but I want you to look at the before and the after because I could take this action now and I can apply it to any set of images and look at this. This is the before versus the after. I mean, this is absolutely night and day. And if you want it to be more subtle, you can totally do that. Tune down those settings. But the power of this is insane. The amount of time that it can save you is ridiculous as well. Okay, so since filming, well, two things. I got an incredible sunburn shooting over this weekend. And number two, Retouch for me actually released Color Match. It's a new plugin and I thought it it's pretty cool. So I wanted to throw it into this video, give you guys an idea of what it does. I already have it installed and pulled up. So this is what the dialogue looks like on my side. And what Color Match does, it allows you to basically create LUTs or to create, uh, these are lookup tables or like color grading effects, right? From reference files. And I'm just gonna show you. So what I'm gonna do first is select an image that I'd like to apply the LUT to. So I just have an image that I actually shot from this weekend, which is part of the reason I have this sunburn. I'm gonna cancel out everything on the right side because I'm gonna walk you through it. So what you're gonna do on the right side is load a reference file. A reference file is just any image from anything. So you can take like a Hollywood movie, like for example, 
This is a still shot just from a, a Google search of Inception, right? Inception, the Hollywood film. And it has that kind of teal orange color grading effect. And once I have that in, I can now adjust the blend. And what the AI is doing is matching that color grading effect over to this image. And you might be like, well, that's cool and everything, but I wanna be able to use this in other ways. Well, that's exactly what this allows you to do because you can actually export this as a LUT, which you can then use inside of Photoshop. You can bring it over to Lightroom as a profile. You can also use it in video editing apps, everything. But let me show you how we would kind of tweak. So from here, I'm gonna tweak my luminance. I'm gonna bring the color. So as I slide it to the right, it becomes more like the reference image. As I slide it to the left, it's more like the original. So I'm gonna find this little balance right there the color smoothing, I'm gonna bring this up pretty high, like right here. And when I'm ready to go, I just press export LUT. It gives me the option to save this as a cube file, which then I can use inside of my other applications. And there's one other cool thing I wanna show you too. So let's do this. I'm gonna scratch that reference file and load up one other one. So here's another one where I really like this kind of just soft uh, warmth on this image that I found. So I'm gonna take the blend a little bit down and let's bring the luminance, yeah, let's bring that down as well and bring the color kind of a little bit more towards the reference file. And I think I like the smoothing kind of close to maxed out on this one, if not maxed out. Now, once I'm here, I can actually go to this LUT manager. And from here, you can see that Retouch for Me is building out kind of this community of LUTs. So essentially I have like different categories. This is the editor's pick category. And what I can do is go into these different LUTs that other people have created and I can bring them into my application and apply it along with the reference file. I'm gonna select Vano2, and now I'm using his LUT underneath that reference file. So it's applying the reference, and then it's applying the LUT as well, which then I can blend however much I like, right? If I want it to be more like that LUT, if I want it to be a little bit less like that. So I'm kind of taking two different places, a reference file as well as a, a finished LUT by someone else, and creating my own sort of look for it. When I'm ready to go, I'm just gonna go ahead and export the LUT, save it out, and now I can use it in other applications. So anyway, very cool. I thought this was an interesting and very useful plugin to show y'all. Hope you enjoy, and now we'll wrap this up. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful to each of you. Honestly, from my end, I, I really dig these tools, especially when you're doing these things a lot inside of Photoshop. This can save you a tremendous amount of time. That being said, again, purchase the ones that actually make sense to you and make sense to your workflow. One of the things that I also wish as well is I wish there was a bit more tools and functionality inside of each of the plugins where I could apply and see adjustments made. And I also kind of wish it worked a little bit faster, but maybe that's just my computer. But optimization side would be nice improvements, especially when you're applying it across large sets of images. If you're doing a thousand images and you're applying that action that we just created, then you wanna just let your computer run basically overnight. It's gonna take quite a bit of time um, but at the same time, it's not active time, right? So it's not eating up your time. And that's where the huge benefit in all these AI tools and specifically retouch for me comes in because it's really about letting the computer do a lot of the more manual work on your behalf so that you can kind of focus more on the vision of what you're creating so that you can focus on going out and creating more so you can focus on your business or just living life. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. We're also gonna link up a special promo code in the description of the video, uh, as well as all the plugins and everything you can find there as well. That's it for me. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.